Hello, good day. So in this tutorial video, you will learn about the measures of dispersion for ungrouped data. Measures of dispersion is also known as the measures of variability. Now, kinagamit natin ang measures of dispersion to see the spread or the variability of a certain scores in a set of data. At Kinagamit din natin ito hindi lamang yung measures of central tendency to compare two or more group of set of group of data. For example, in this given set of data, we have two groups. So we have group A and group B. Now, as you notice, the scores are different between the two groups. Pero yung mean ng dalawa is the same. Yung median ng dalawa is the same also and there's no mode in the given two groups. Now, how do we compare these two groups objectively if they have the same measures of central tendency? So, ang gagamitin natin is the measure of dispersion or yung measures of variability. Now, by definition, measures of dispersion are descriptive statistics when we say descriptive statistics, uh, these are the tools or measures that uh, we cannot make conclusion or inference on a given set of data. It can only describe how similar a set of scores are to each other. Okay, so the more similar the scores are to each other, of course, the lower the measure of dispersion. Similarly, the less similar the scores are to each other, the higher the measure of dispersion will be. And in general, the more spread out a distribution is, the larger the measure of dispersion will be. Now, let's take these two distribution of scores. Which between the two distribution of scores has the larger dispersion? So, obviously, the upper distribution has the larger dispersion so because the scores are spread out. Okay, mas spread yung scores dito kesa, da, kesa dito sa distribution na to. Meaning, uh, the scores here in this distribution are less similar to each other. Now, these are the measures of dispersion. First is the range, second is the interquartile range, third is the variance and the standard deviation, and lastly is the coefficient of variation. Now let's take a look at the first measure which is the range. And range is defined as the difference between the largest score and, and the smallest score in a given set of data. For example, in this uh, data, the range here is, of course, we have to get the largest score, which is the 9, and the smallest, the smallest score is 1. So just subtract the two scores, and it will give you 8. So 8 then is the range. Now, when to use the range? So ginagamit natin ang range when we have the ordinal data. So, paano yung, yung ratio and interval data? Of course, pwede, rin, pwede natin gamitin yung range in those data because interval and ratio has a characteristic of the ordinal data. Now, the limitation of range is that it is rarely used in scientific work as it is, as it is fairly insensitive. So, hindi madalas na ginagamit in a scientific work because napaka uh, insensitive, siya, insensitive niya. Why? Because it depends only two scores. At ano yung scores na yun? The largest score and the smallest score. So, halimbawa dito, in the two different sets of data, we can have same range. For example, here, in this set, the range is 8 and in this set, the range is also 8. 
Okay? By just using the range, hindi natin makikita yung comparison because they have two same range. Pero dun sa set of data natin, magkakaiba, magkakaiba naman yung scores. So, what, that is one of the limitations of range. Now, let's proceed to variance. Ang variance natin is defined as the average average of the square deviations. So, ito yung formula natin for the uh, variance. So, this is the sigma squared equals the summation of x minus the population mean, okay, the squared over n, which is the number of scores. What does the variance formula mean? So, first, it says to subtract the mean from each of the scores. So, pagka nakuha natin yung mean ng isang distribution or yung set of data, isusubtract lang natin yung mean na yon into each score. The difference, yung tawag natin doon sa difference is the deviate or a deviation score. Now, the, devi the deviate or the deviation score tells us how far a given score is from the typical or average score. Kaano, kaagaano kalayo yung isang score doon sa mean or in average score. Thus, the deviate is the measure of dispersion for a given score. Okay, so this will be the alpha formula for the variance. Next, Bakit hindi na lang natin um, gamitin itong formula na to? Why, why can't we simply take the average of the deviates? Now, ito yung uh, dahilan kung bakit hindi ito ang ginagamit natin. Bakit hindi na lang kunin yung average ng deviates? So first, since one of the definitions of, of the mean is that it always made the sum of the scores minus the mean equal to zero. Pagka pinag-add daw natin yung, yung sagot dito, yung x minus d min, ang, ang makuha nating sum is 0. So definitely, kapag dinibide natin yung 0 into any number, it will always give us 0. Okay? So take note of that. And to avoid this problem, statist statisticians or mathematicians or any person, researchers, Get, just get the square deviate score prior to, to averaging them. Okay? Para magawing positive yung mga scores natin. So, squaring the deviate score makes all the squared scores positive. Okay? Para hindi na mag-zero yung summation ng mga deviates natin. Okay? So, that is why our formula is this. Now, the variance is the mean of the square deviation score. So, this will be probably the, the definition. Square deviation, so that's why we have the square. The larger the variance is, the more scores deviate on average away from the mean. So, habang palalaki ng palaki yung variance, okay, ganun naman uh, nag spread yung Yung scores, yung scores deviate natin doon sa average. Papalayo doon sa mean. The smaller the variance is, the less score deviates of, uh, on average from the mean. Okay? The smaller, <coughs> the less. Now, the standard deviation, uh, when the deviate scores are squared in variance, their unit of measure is also squared. For example, if people's weights are measured in pounds, of course, yung variance niya dapat ay squared pounds. Okay, since naka-square yung variance natin. Also, the same kapag ang unit of measure na ginamit natin is square, yung variance niya must be square meter. Now, since squared units of measure are often difficult to deal with, Ang ginagawa natin is we just get the square root of the variance. Okay? Pag kinuha natin yung square root of variance, then we'll have the standard deviation. Okay? So, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So, thus, the formula 
the standard deviation is the square root of variance. So here is the uh, formula for the standard deviation. While in variance, we just have to square the, the standard deviation, mawawala na square root. So this will be the formula for the variance. As you notice, pag kinukuha natin yung standard deviation, meron siyang square root at wala nang square doon. Sa variance naman, wala na siyang square root pero meron na siyang square doon sa symbol natin as na si so, uh, ito. Next, for the computational formula, when calculating variance, um, it is often easier to use a computational formula which is algebraically equivalent to definitional formula here. So this is the formula for variance. Uh, where uh, this symbol is the population variance. Yung x natin is the score. The mu is the population mean. And n is the number of scores. So this is the formula for getting the uh, variance of the population. Take note ah, the variance of a population. Na paano naman kapag ka sample? If we just get the variance of a sample. So the since the sample mean is not perfect estimate of the population mean, so magbabago lang kaonte yung, yung formula natin. So ito na yung magiging formula natin if we're going to use sample. So meron na siyang s squared at yung mu natin magiging x bar. So this will be the mean. And then yung population natin na yung number of scores rather is subtracted to 1. So, we have n minus 1. So, this will be the variance of the sample. Okay? Coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation natin, it tells if the standard deviation is large or small by just simply comparing the standard deviation to the mean. And it allows comparison of standard deviation that comes from data sets with different means. So, ito yung mga formula natin for population coefficient variation. Okay, ito lang. We, we use this symbol, these symbols to uh, entails population. Ito naman, sample, ginagamit natin yung S and then X bar para sabihin na it is, we are uh, computing for sample data. Okay, just take note of these two formulas. Madalas ang ginagamit natin is sample. Sample variance, sample standard deviation, sample coefficient variation. Now let's have this exercise. Find the measures of dispersion in the given sample data. So take note class, this is just a sample data. So meaning, we're going to use um, uh, sample for variance, Sample standard deviation, sample coefficient of variation. So since measures of dispersion, kung natin lahat, first is of course the range. Ang range natin is the largest, which is 10, minus the lowest, which is 6. Then we have a range of 4. Now for the, stand, for the variance, since ang formula natin for the sample variance is this one, so before getting into variance, first kailangan natin i-compute yung mean, which is the x-bar. So again, yung x-bar natin, the mean, you just have to add all of this divided by the number of scores, which is equal to 6. So para kunin yan, so okay, add, add all the scores divided by 6. And we have a summation here, 47 divided by 6 is equal to 7.83. Okay, next. Since the variance or the, the mean is 7.83, we're going to get now the deviate scores. Pag pagsinabi natin deviate, is subtract natin yung mean to each score. Okay, so para makuha natin yan, we'll make a table. So, for the first column is our X, the setup data. Make sure na it is in increasing order. Next, anong ilalagay natin dun sa next column? Next column natin will be the deviate scores. So, that is 
is score minus the mean. Okay, so our x, the first x here is 6, subtract it to 7.83, and then we'll have negative 1.83. Then same lang, gagawin natin dito sa 7 to 10. So we have 7 minus 7.83, we have 0, negative 0 0.83, also the same with here. 8 minus 7.83, we have 0 0.17. 9 minus the mean, we'll have 1.17. 10 minus the mean, we have 2.17. Now, yung sinasabi natin kanina, if we add all of these, you'll get 0. Okay? Kung, makuha, kung yung, yung sum naman nito is 0 point something, it is because we rounded up here. Okay, pero pag hintay na ground at inad natin lahat ng values dito, then definitely we'll have 0. So that is why yung gagawin natin para makuha natin yung variance, i-square natin yung mga values na nakuha natin to, dito. So this is why we have squared of the deviation. So gagawin lang natin, negative 1.83 squared, by using your calculator, we'll have 3.3489. So our standard would be up to 4 decimal places. Okay? Next, Negative 0 0.83 squared will have this. Then by just doing so, so we'll have these values. Now after getting the values for the squared deviation, since meron tayong summation here, a summation symbol, we're going to add all of these values. And the summation of all of these values will have 10.8334. Now, since we have the data, then we can probably compute for the variance. Since the summation of the squared deviation will have 10.8334, to yun, and yung number of scores natin probably we have 6. So, 6 minus 1. Then we'll have 5, the denominator. Then by just computing this, we'll have 2.1667. So, again, up to four decimal places. So that is our variance. Now, since the variance is uh, the squared of the standard deviation, para makuha naman natin yung standard deviation, we just have to square root this. Okay? So we'll have the square root of 2.1667, then we'll have 1.4720. So, this is under deviation. Next, for the coefficient of variation, our formula for sample coefficient variation is the standard deviation, sample standard deviation divided by the mean times the 100%. Since the standard deviation is 1.4720 divided by our mean before is 7.83, then you have to multiply the, the value here by 100, then the value here is 0 0.118, 1880 rather, so again, um, get up to 4 decimal places times 100, then we'll have 18.8%, so don't forget to uh, put the percent here. So that is how we're going to find the measures of this dispersion for an ungroup data. Now, as your exercise, compute or find the measures of dispersion, the range, variance, standard deviation, coefficient of variation on the following sample data. Now, thank you for listening. God bless everyone.